In this video, we are going to understand how I implemented a common JWT authentication library to secure all of my microservices APIs. If you have been watching my previous videos about microservices, you would see that each microservice API inherits a parent Maven project. This allows me to set a consistent pattern of versioning for Spring Boot, Spring Cloud, Java, and other such dependencies. So it was natural for me to include a set of JWT authentication classes directly within my core project that every API service could inherit. In one of my previous videos, I was setting up JWT authentication directly within my API gateway. However, with that approach, it was not possible for me to authenticate my login credentials against a database before issuing a JWT token. You can take a look at that video by clicking on the link above. So with this new implementation, I'm using Spring Auto Configuration to automatically wire up and intercept requests and validate the token for each of my services using a common core module. Along with that, I generate a new token by calling an authentication endpoint within my user service, and that validates the credentials within my user database. Now let's take a deeper look at my core module. I'm making use of the Spring Auto Configuration to ensure that my API authentication class is auto-wired. This is done by adding a spring.factories file under my resources, meta INF, and then I'm providing the classes that I want Spring to auto-wire. Within my API auth autoconfig class, I'm providing a bunch of beans that are required for my JWT authentication to work. Every microservice API needs to provide the properties that are relevant for GWT authentication. So over here, if those properties are not available, I'm just throwing a runtime exception. Router validator class needs to provide the API endpoints that are open that don't need to be authenticated. So when I need someone to come in and register or do a login or do an authenticate, or if I need to expose the Swagger documentation, um, I don't want those endpoints to be protected by JWT. And so these are the kind of endpoints that I am leaving as open API endpoints. JWT token util is the main class that is responsible for either generating a token or validating a token. And the API authentication filter bean is responsible to intercept all the requests that are coming into my API and ensuring that it goes through my authentication filter. And within my API auth filter, I am checking whether I need to filter that request for JWT authentication or not. And if it needs to be filtered, then I'm validating the token. So I'm checking against my validator if that request needs to be filtered or not. And then within my do filter internal method, I'm validating my JWT token. So I'm first checking whether my JWT con configuration is enabled or not. If that is enabled, then I need to make sure that the token is valid. In my JWT config class, it's basically wiring up the configuration that I require for my JWT authentication to happen. So I have a flag whether I want to disable or enable the authentication. And then I have a couple of properties for the secret and validity. So with this setup, I can easily auto wire the JWT authentication using Spring Auto Configuration, I, and I can control whether I want to enable or disable the authentication using a flag. Now let's dig a bit deeper into my user service. So this is a service that's responsible for validating my username and password, and then generating a valid JWT authentication token. Within my authentication controller class, I'm exposing an authenticate endpoint. This will first validate my username and password, and if the credentials are not valid, it will return an error response with the status of unauthorized. Otherwise, it will go further and use the JWT token util class to generate the authentication token. The authenticate method will take in the username and password, and internally it will call the validate user password method within my service. And the service method will use the JPO repository to find a record for that user which matches the same username and password. And once this is all set, all I need to do is provide the appropriate properties for JWT within my services, and then it will start validating my JWT token and doing the authentication. So over here with my microservices, I'm actually using a Spring Cloud Config 
to actually fetch my configuration. And over here, you can see that for my car info service and my car listing service, I'm actually providing the JWT configuration within my application.yaml. Now let's start my application and see how my authentication is working. So I'm going to first start my config discovery and the gateway services. So these are now running. And now I'm just going to start my user service and also my car info and car listing service. Before I start testing my API, I just want to show you that in my local environment, I have the user database. And within that database, I have the user table. And I have a couple of entries within my user table. So you can see I'm validating against my email and password. So geekymontu at gmail.com and the password is password. Now, this is not secure, but that's not the point of this video. As I only want to demonstrate the JWT authentication mechanism. And over here, I'm using Postman to test all my APIs. So I have wired up all the APIs here. Within Postman, to make things easier, I'm providing the token as a global variable. And then within my API, I'm actually having a script in here that will basically use that token and add an authorization header. So let's first try and run some endpoint in the car info service. Let's say I want to get all the car model types. So this is currently saying unauthorized expired JWT token. Now let's go back into my APIs and use my user service to generate a new token. So I'll call the create authentication token endpoint and I'll supply the username and password that I just showed you that was in the database. So once that is done, it will validate my username and password credentials. And if they are successful, it will create a new JWT token. So that's the new token that's available now. And let me copy that and go back to my environments and global variables. And I'll replace the token with the new one that's just generated. And now if I go back to my APIs, I can again try to run my API endpoint to get the car model types. So if I send that, and now you can see that it's successfully authenticating and returning me a response. So with this, I have demonstrated how you can use Spring Auto Configuration to create a generic JWT authentication library and auto wire that library across all your microservices. I hope you find this video useful and thanks a lot for watching.